100 days of Minecraft in a medieval civilization. We need to conquer armies and claim castles. We need to fight Cyclops and dragons, and we need to kill the pixies. I seriously, I hate these little pixies. I'm not even trying to be funny right now. These things all need to die. This is the Ice and Fire mod pack. It's the same mod pack Forge Labs used in his Medieval Times video. And it's going to be the exact same map as well. The Kingdom of Daldar. It's really fun. And Sean's maps, they really can't be beat. I'll be trying to tame this wild, crazy land and make a proper medieval civilization for all of us to live in. All of this while trying to conquer a huge amount of monsters and mobs and beasts and even other civilizations. This is going to be amazing. Almost as amazing as you. This video is a continuation of the Ages of Rebuilding series. And with all the love you guys showed me for my last video, I really cannot explain how much it means to me to have you guys by my side. I really do feel like we're on this adventure together. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So thank you. Now, let's conquer Daldar. And as we fade in, my mind races with the thoughts of what monsters we will encounter first. And, uh, oh, well, hello there. I'm gonna name you Bandit. So we start off with the wood to get the stone tools. You guys have seen 100 day videos before, you know what's up. However, you might not know about Spartan weapons. This is a mod that lets us make a basic wooden shield right away. And we're gonna need it right away because I can see there be dragons out here. Before we get to those, and yes, we will get to those, we come across a witch hut. Whoa, look at that huge tower. I think there's, there's two towers with a wall attaching them. Now that, right there, that's what we're gonna conquer. That looks so cool. Okay, but first, I wanna try to see if I can get any loot out of these surrounding buildings. Now this witch says that her name is Karen and that she wants to talk to my manager, but she's activated my trap card, because surprise, I am the manager. Now I do feel a little bit guilty for leaving this poor little cat alone. After all, she didn't try to poison me. So I grab some delicious fishes and soon we're best friends. Now you guys go and tell me in the comments, what do you think we should name her? I'm leaning towards raisin oatmeal. Maybe that's just because I'm hungry. Well, I'm always hungry. Next, we head towards these buildings, but something here is very wrong. I see mobs inside of the very first house. This isn't a good sign. And now I'm afraid that they're actually part of the map. I'm worried that this whole village might be a lost cause. Sure enough, we walk right into our first danger of the playthrough on day one. I can see all of this loose loot out here on the floor and there must have been a massacre out here. This is why we need to conquer Daldar. This kingdom needs a hero. And what luck! These chests are loaded with hero tier gear. This one lone iron golem is all that remains of this village. Someone's standing on top of that tower. For now, we just need some sleep. Day two, and I'm already wrapped up in a fight. I'm going door to door, clearing out all of the mobs. But I will admit, most of them are getting stuck inside, so this part isn't too bad. I decide to claim this house closest to the beach as my first little temporary base. I'm gonna save the loot that I collect from the rest of the village right here. And as I get closer to the towers, I can see that there are people all over the walls. I also see that these aren't just a couple of towers. This thing is huge. It might have four towers. It might be a full on castle. Sure enough, I see the front gate. It's crazy. It has this big gatehouse and it looks like in the center, there's a wooden keep, but it's getting late today. Day three. And I feel like today might be the day we lay siege to our new castle. If I can get out of the shack first. I find a bow, the pink scoundrel. Hmm, that reminds me of something. <clears throat> Moving on. I get right up to the front gate and I see this place looks so cool inside. I can't wait to make it our own. I start by breaking a hole on one of the sides. Okay, let's do this. Oh, oof, they are tough. I thought this glaive would be, ooh, okay. 
Uh, I'm gonna need to take a few steps back. They are really tanking all of this damage. Wow. I, I need to use the water to trap them and keep moving back to try to get just one of them down. Just look at this. Hit after hit. I thought this weapon was a legendary. And these are just a couple of stragglers. Okay. This might be a bit of a challenge. Um, okay, so let's see. These ones look different. Unlike the other knights, these ones actually take knockback. And maybe they... Yeah, they take a few less hits. These ones aren't so bad. Still, I'm barely even in the front door yet. I mean, look at this. There's so many all over the place. They're even inside of the walls here. Wow, okay. This might be a little... Oh! No, 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 no! Oh, they do eight hearts? And I have some good armor on, too. My chest plate is better than diamond. It... Okay, I didn't prepare for this. You know what? Fine. I didn't want that castle anyway. It smells bad, and... Okay, I, I still really want to take that castle. But we're going to have to wait. For now, let's gear up. I know that a lot of you who watched my last video might be thinking, why didn't I continue the Sev Tech mod into the medieval age? Well, the Sev Tech mod was good, but Pam's Harvest Craft, that's great. You know this is my favorite Minecraft mod, and you know how much I really hated not having it in our last video. So I had to make a choice, and I decided I'd add Harvest Craft to the Kingdom of Daldar. We find this band of roaming highway thugs. I'm tempted to try to pick a few of them off. Soon, one of them starts firing arrows at me, and I decide I wasn't really ready for a fight. And in the end, I still did manage to find these. These bushes will give us some special Pam's Harvest Craft crops to start our farm. And oh look, a little croc. Do you want to help me find some? Oh, no, no, he does not want to help. Okay, he shreds right through my wooden shield. Oof. Man, Steve Irwin really did make this look a whole lot easier. Now this next part here, well, look, I really need an iron bucket, so this is going to help us remake society in the end, so it's the right thing to do. And even if it is, it sure doesn't feel right. So look, we got our iron bucket, and now we can start to plant our farm. And I'm getting pretty close, but I don't want to be out at night. So, first thing on day five, we start to plant our carrots. Now I know, I know, you're probably thinking, Captain, you just made a big deal about Pam's Harvest Craft. Why are you planting vanilla crops? And you know what? You're right, as usual. But at the moment, I don't really have a good selection of crops. So, it's time to craft up another shield and head out on another adventure. And yes, I am going to be doing some mining. It is... Minecraft, after all, but I'm going to cut out most of the mining from this playthrough. I will not be skipping this loot, however. A flaming quiver to go with my pink scoundrel. Hmm, that's a little on the nose there. Anyway, I find another group of roaming raiders. No matter what direction I go, I always end up finding a bunch of these guys. So I get out of here, and I start working on a new plan. And I use some of the iron I found today to get better gear. Now I really wish I didn't kill that golem. I upgrade my shield to an iron one. But I can't really think about that iron golem right now. I need to stay focused and get a market built. Day six, and here we go. With this guy, I can buy any of Pam's Harvest Craft crops for just an emerald. So here we go. Of course, I start by getting my potato. Um, oh, you can't buy potatoes. Okay, I guess I'll buy some peas, and an onion, and some celery. Why not? It's not like you sell any good crops. I want my potatoes. Lame. So we angrily plant all our crops. Angrily? Anger? Ang is that a word? Angrily? Anyway, we bone meal the crops so we can complete the farm. And we put some of the extras in this little chest over here. Humble, sure, but this will keep us fed. But I still hunger for adventure. So we set out over the ice sheets and we find this little dude. He is very angry and I like him. But what I don't like is how no matter how many bushes I look in, I can't find any potatoes. A zucchini, a scallion, come on, 
I'm not that fancy. But I do manage to find this. It's a half-built castle, and I decide I want to see if I can sneak in and grab some quick loot. But right away, I see this yellow knight defending it, so this isn't going to be easy. Now, just like they say with yellow snow, I really don't want to touch the yellow knight. Remember kids, do not touch the yellow snow. I managed to get this one down, so I'm feeling a bit more brave, and I try to see if I can't sneak a little bit further in. Okay, oh, I'm looking around, and whoop, okay, not that sneaky, not that sneaky, uh, opposite of sneaky, uh, clumsy, uh, announced even. With two hearts and uh, a setting sun, this adventure didn't really go as well as I hoped. The next day, I'm already running out of food, so I decide to munch down four whole garlic cloves. Hmm, delicious. I do end up making some bread, and I head right back to the yellow snow, I mean castle. But I've already got the attention of one of the big knights, and he manages to spank my booty for almost all of my health. On a serious note, these guys can easily two-shot me. So I run into the water to try to get a little bit of distance, and I use the pink scoundrel. And yes, I know this is cheese, but I'm not dying and reloading this map. I really like my start so far, and I do not want to restart again. Speaking of a lucky start, I find these chickens right next to this water. And, um, oh, well, guys, you didn't leave me any room in the boat here. I, I really hate to do this, but... Oh, and I killed... Oh, look, the black one. Ugh, well, now my white guilt is really starting to flare up. Ouch. And, just like a proper captain, I managed to row, row, row my boat over the seas and get my first little chicky back home. We set up the pen... And even though it's getting a little late, we should have enough time to get little Cluck nice and safe. We expand the farm, and I start to power grow up some cotton. The reason we're doing this is because it's the touch, the feel of cotton. It is the fabric of our lives. Oh, and because you can make string, which of course you can make into wool. We take the wool, and we make carpet. So now we can finally finish little Cluck's pen. We then throw this egg and... Oh. Oh well. I guess you're all alone. Cluck the cuck. Ah, uh, too bad. You know what? Let's head back to the shore. Let's see if we can't salvage poor little Cluck's love life. And while looking for a chicken, my ADD gets the better of me. And we end up finding this lovely little piggy. This is Sir Peter Porker. And, oof, that over there. Wow, that is terrifying. We get home and dig out this small little pig pen. Raisin is walking by and actively trying to sabotage me. It's probably because I left a little cluck all alone earlier, and you know what? That's totally fair. But we get it done, and Peter appears pretty perfect in his pig pen. Day 9, and the food stocks are already looking a lot better. Still wish we had some potatoes, but whatever. We do have this new addition to our family, however. Penelope, please meet Peter. Peter, Penelope. Can you feel the love in the air tonight? Oh look guys, they're porking. <laughs> okay, uh, that was uh, that was too far. As for Cluck, I haven't forgotten about you, little guy. Another trip out to sea, and soon we have Mrs. Cluck. Heading home that night, I see the home village, but also, whoa, awesome. An Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country. Now look. You're no longer forever alone, buddy. Looks like Mrs. Cluck is a c oh, well, uh, I might have spoken too soon. Mrs. Cluck, you might have some explaining to do there. Well, before that scene blows up like an episode of Mori, I'm off again. This time, we're headed deep into the ice biome. This is where Forge Labs went when he started his playthrough, and it's where he fought Frostma. Judging by the dragon bones, I kind of have a really bad feeling about this place. But the first thing we find, it's not a dragon's den. Instead, we find this weird pantheon thing and a graveyard. Man, I sure hope there's nothing spooky in here. Oh, hey, look, a chest. And what's that? Oh, something super spooky. Ooh, this ghost is green and my guard was down. What's that smell? My pants are brown. I try to fight this ghost, 
But I must admit, I was a little bit sluggish. I am, after all, being weighed down in the um, <clears throat> the backside a little bit here. And and uh, speaking of hooping my pants, there are two more ghosts chasing me. And they're doing a pretty good job of keeping up. I run all that day, but I can't really get away. Then I mess up, and I fall into this ravine. And they move so fast that I don't really have time to get a good swipe in. So I kind of just panic mash my attack button, and, um, kind of embarrassed to admit this, but, yeah, it did work. So, 200 IQ? The next day, I decide it's time to see if anyone in this area has a clean pair of pants. I start by knocking on this creepy death tomb full of skulls and death, uh, but the smell must be keeping them from answering the door. I see this tower over here. Maybe they can help. Excuse me. Yes. Hello? Uh, I seem to have pooped deep in my pants. Uh, I was wondering if you fellas maybe had like a grocery bag or maybe like a mop and bucket. No? You guys aren't down with the brown? You don't screw with the poo? And back at home. We're getting some of our harvest craft crops. And also, we're going to grab some clay. Clay is a big part of almost all of the harvest craft cooking utensils. The first thing we do is we get a pot because we can use this to make some stock. It's a core ingredient in a ton of the good recipe. Are you guys even paying attention or are you still thinking about all those poop jokes? Come on, guys. Okay, in order to make some stock, we need a protein. And if I've learned anything from the meatheads in the gym, eggs are a great source of protein. However, Harvestcraft disagrees. And we're going to need to get some protein by, well, sorry, little piggies. Because we're going to be using a fishing pole. What? You guys didn't think I was going to hurt Peter, did you? Sadly, this custom fish here, the perch, it's not going to work to make stock. So we have to wait until we get some raw cod. C cod. With a D. No, not, not that kind of D. Anyway, moving on. We get a little bit of stock made so that I can test out what recipes that we should aim for. And I decide it's only fitting that we try to make some traditional medieval food. And what's better than old world soup? But a quick trade at the market and then plop in the ground, we're looking good. You know what would be a good medieval food? Shepherd's pie. Oh, only we need those potatoes. Okay, what about uh, old cottage pie? Oh, seriously? That needs potatoes too? I swear. At this point, my whole goal of this playthrough is to find one of those potatoes. I stay up tonight trying to get some bones from skeletons so that we can make bone meal and power grow our barley. And it takes us all night, but we do get the barley. And then we can get the old world soup. It's okay. Could use some potatoes, but it's okay. Next, I'm going to get some green tea. And yes, I do read all your comments. My hashtag team green tea people, you're going strong. However, now it needs a bit of spice, so we spend our last emerald and we buy a spice leaf. But I almost forget that we're still out at night, and this still is hardcore. Soon, a few mobs come raiding in, and I actually get a little bit closer than I'd like to dying. This is getting a little bit too dangerous just to speed up the farming, so time to go to bed. Finally, we do get that spice leaf growing. Well, our farm is looking a little bit crowded, but I mean, we all know that our farm isn't even close to being complete. Oh, no, 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 no. We still need one of those potatoes, and I've decided I'm not coming back until I find one. In fact, as I look through my recipes, I spend so much time seething over these potatoes that night falls and I almost die again. Day 15, and I do finally find this nice little recipe. Sausage. Well, well, well. You know what that means, you little piggies, don't you? It means it's time to go over to the chickens, and you know what that means, little chickies, don't you? It means I'm going to take your eggs and boil them, of course. Now we have bread, boiled eggs, and green tea. A perfect medieval breakfast. Are you guys not hungry? Man, Pam's Harvest Craft always makes me hungry. We might have some food now, but sadly, our glaive broke, so we're going to roll with the diamond sword for just a minute until we can find something better. We head back out into the ice, but it's getting late. I see a few towers, but I don't want to get caught up in a fight and have nightfall. Good thing is, I brought my bed this time, so I can go to sleep and pass the night. Day 16, 
and in the morning, I decide to head out over the seas and travel further than I ever have before. Which brings us to day 17. It takes us an entire day of traveling through the swamp. But I finally find this biome, the Red Hills. On top of one of the hills, I can see a tiny little mini castle. So I decide to run up and carefully see what's going on here. Right away, I see some pillagers and I start to pick them off one by one. Okay, okay, not too bad. I start to run through and smash all these spawners like I work for Planned Parenthood. But before I can check all the loot, a yellow knight rushes over the hill. Now I wasn't worried about him, but I start to realize now that we don't have our glaive anymore, the diamond sword is so weak. It takes some real work just to take down this one yellow boy. All right. Let's check these chests and... Oh, okay. Kind of weird stuff in here. What's this chest? 19. Armor that's like... Th three times better than diamond? No way. Now I know I'm still roleplaying here as Planned Parenthood. For a second. But after finding this chest plate and this matching helmet, you might as well call me daddy. I have to go up against one more yellow knight. And it takes almost all my shield and the rest of day 17. And it's a harsh reminder that we do still need a better weapon. And on day 18, I see another floating castle on the horizon. I slowly approach it, but I think we may have gotten lucky here. I check all the chests, and sure enough, more top tier gear. I'm kind of just on a whole new level with this stuff, but I don't want these knights to feel like I ignored them, so I, I do head down and kill them too. Next, I see this weird golden cloud base thing. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be or how this is supposed to work. But what I do know is that inside of this chest is a 17 damage master's katana. And there it is. We've done it. We have pillaged and looted and finally conquered our way into being powerful enough to take on any challenge. And... At the outset of day 19, I think we all know exactly what challenge we're going to be facing next. The last journey used up all of our food, so I need to get some salt from the water, and I add that to some spice and some pork. And no, I did not kill Peter. I found this pork. A pig accidentally dropped it. I was going to give it back to them, but you know, they were dead. My chickies tried to tell me something about Building a civilization on bloodshed alone is just as bad as the apocalypse that I left behind. But then I remembered chickens can still run around after you cut off their heads. So what do they know? I then make a diamond shield to complete my dungeon gear running set. And just before I head out to conquer, Peter Porker says that I'm using my newfound powers to destroy, not create. But I couldn't really hear him over the sound of me eating my sausage. Day 20. And the day has come. These foul nights of darkness shall find their end. And I am going to get a sweet new castle and definitely a hot girlfriend. Maybe. Sure enough, I find this first knight. And just like I thought, the katana makes quick work of him. Now, these guards and knights aren't much tougher than killing just vanilla zombies. What? What? Wait, what's that thing behind? Whoa, look at this guy. This is a new one. He's a tank. And even with all of my armor, he still hits with some real power. I try to hold him in place with my diamond shield, but he has a battle axe. An axe that disables my shield temporarily. So I am going to need to keep moving and quickly attacking him. I have to really dance with this guy. And finally, one-on-one, -on -one, I do manage to get him. I hope there aren't any more of those. And the very next guy is a tank knight right behind me. Why do I even talk? Like, you guys know I'm just going to jinx myself as soon as I open my mouth. Okay. I really do need to be smart here. I can manage to fight those guys if I take them on one-on-one. -on -one. And I need room to move around. I see this wooden keep, and I think it might be made of dirt. Okay. Okay. Well, as soon as I get inside, and I see that this isn't made of dirt, check this out. A bunch of diamonds, and a book with infinity on it? 
I move up to the next floor, and the golden apples, boys, are mine. Uh, I guess that's not really important right now. I need to keep an eye out behind me, make sure I clear out this castle before I get too swept up in all the loot. But at this time, can you blame me? Notch apples too. Oof. And there's still another floor up in the attic. There are at least nine chests in this keep, and almost all of them are fully loaded with really good gear. And now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of don't think I should move any of it. I mean, I think we all know, I'm going to be living here from now on. I head to the very center room, and I throw down my bed. Because now, this is my castle. I'm the king. The next day, I look out over my courtyard. Not bad. Not bad at all. But yeah, there are still plenty of knights up on the top of the towers and on the walls. Now, fighting the knights in the open ground, it was pretty straightforward. Now I need to go up the towers and fight them in really close quarters. You can see here that I'm using my patented butt poke technique. No better way to get at that booty. Oh, and speaking of booty, we do plunder some diamond pants and boots, which should help us out up on these walls. And like I said, I really can't kite and back up when I'm fighting on the walls. So it's just much harder to control these fights. But the more I clear out, the more I can control the fights. I see that there's this infighting going on. It looks like they're killing each other. Speaking of a crumbling civilization, these guys seem to know that this castle has fallen, and it's pretty much all over for them. I see another tank knight, but we are fully geared, and we're ready for this. So even though the tank knights are super dangerous, we have this one easily dealt with. Guys, come on. You just watched me kill your boss. You really think you guys have a chance here? Aw, oh, look at him. What cute little henchman you are. In fact, this boss is the last real threat in our castle. After we take care of him, it's just a matter of cleaning up the stragglers. And once again, I see the last of them killing each other. They've completely turned. I'm about to head back down. And then I see this tank right here. I didn't see this guy before. I think I can take care of him pretty easily, but now I'm worried that the knights might be respawning, so I need to keep my guard up the entire time. But for now, we've taken the castle, and we've taken the title of Conqueror. It feels pretty good. And the next day, I'm looking around the courtyard, and I'm seeing that there's a lot of weeds and tall grass. Some of the paths aren't finished, and the whole keep really is weirdly made out of dirt. But hey, that's not any worse than my college dorm room. And just like my college dorm room, I just need to pretend like I'm about to have a girl over and clean this whole swamp up, make it look like I'm not a total slob. Just another Friday night for me and the boys. I dig out all the dirt, and I throw some spruce in its place. Then, I throw down some dark oak doors. The best looking doors. And finally, by that night, this keep is fit for royalty. We're only on day 22, and I basically already have a rebuilt society. I'm going to add in some paths and start to trim up the weeds so the courtyard looks a little bit better. So now that we have taken this castle, our next goal should really be to set ourselves up to stay on the offensive. We're going to use this as our new home base, obviously, but I want to keep exploring and looking for new castles to raid. And we're definitely going to need to find us some dragons. But first, I'm going to work a little bit on defense. And what's the best defense you can think of? Okay, yes, uh, technically machine gun would be a great answer. But, but I was going more with, like, a moat, since we are still trying to keep this medieval. But also, let's be real here, mostly this is just to really bump up that curb appeal. I'm trying to flex on all those poor peasant boys. Next up on our list of to-dos, we need to make a drawbridge. I start by setting out some jungle wood, because I rarely get to use this type of wood in any of my builds. Then I decide to use some acacia wood. And yes, I know I'm pronouncing it correctly this time. I think I used to call this wood Arcadia wood. <laughs> and I read the comments. I know that was hurting some people's ears. I kind of felt bad for that one. Oh, and speaking of hurting your ears, this bridge is hurting my eyes. Turns out, jungle wood is just not the right move here, and I decide to throw down some spruce supports instead. Perfect. 
Now, we're out at the old farm back in the village where I'm collecting up some of the crops. And we can get back to my favorite thing. Well, second favorite thing, next to Gloria's Conquest, and that's farming. I spend all day making a patchwork for all the different types of crops, each in their own little space. This makes our collection of crops better, and also it just looks really cool. They're all growing like different patches, all these crops in a row. But it's not like we're just going to go vegan and grow only our vegetables. We need to set up a good area to put our animals to. Finally, on day 27, I'm ready to move our Cluck Clucks into their new royal home. Hmm, uh-oh. They seem to have gotten a hold of an Instagram account, and they're now T-posing to assert dominance. Come on now, guys. This isn't 2010. Get yourselves a TikTok and start making some little thoughty posts, like the rest of us. One quick restart later, and... Ah, much better. Yes, my legion, follow your king. We shall lay waste to many lands and poo on the faces of those who oppose us. Big chicky poos, my brothers. Soon, most of the clucks are all inside the walls, and now it's time to... discipline those chickens who didn't follow us. And now we are prepared to go pick up Peter and his pack of perfect piggies. And I will say, these pigs are way more aggressive than the chickens. I mean, look, they're pushing me all around. And that night, just like back when I was single, I finally managed to get these pigs back to my place. These ones actually smell a little bit nicer, too. Into the pen you go, ladies. Now, this castle is war-ready, and it's looking pretty solid. It's good to be king. And so, we set out on our next great crusade. And it starts with this soon-to-be pair of boots. He grabs me and tries to drag me into the water. But I just had lunch, and if I go swimming, I'll get cramps. So, I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill him. Then we head out along the shoreline until we find some more roaming bandits. I one-shot this little guy with this new gear, and oh look, the baby coon, so cute. What was I doing? Oh, that's right, committing war crimes. And then I find this little guy. Not that it's, you know, important to our story. It's just getting distracted by cute animals. It's a little seal. Come on. Day 29, and I find this weird den. It's full of bones and skulls and really good loot. If I didn't know any better, I would say this kind of looked like a monster's den. So it's a really good thing that there's no monsters. Oh my god, a monster. This thing manages to get me down to one heart, which means he is clearly a real gamer. And he seems to be spraying me with some kind of goo. This must be his gamer goo. Now, on a serious note, if you've all watched Forge Lab's video in Daldar, you know what I'm doing right now is a huge mistake. Because this is a Hydra, an ancient mythological monster that grows two heads in place of one of its severed ones. So by shooting it and damaging it more, it's growing more heads. And more heads means more gamer goo on my face. And oh boy, is that a lot of gamer goo headed right for my face. I try to convince myself that if I did enough damage in a big burst, I could rush him down and kill him before he grew back all of his heads. So I wasted a golden apple and try to land as much damage as I can, as fast as I can, but no matter what I do, I just end up making him stronger. My face stickier. Man, I am really obsessed with this gamer goo. I, I need to stop. Reflect on my life choices here for a second. I run over to this abandoned, ruined castle, and I quickly run around and see what loot's here. Luckily, there are a ton of arrows, so at least we didn't waste all of those. I then throw down my bed, and I just think about my... My life choices. So you know, normal night. On day 30, I find this dark oak forest. And I can see some smoke rising from over the trees. I head in hoping to find a village or a place to rest. But instead, I find a pillager camp. I ask this guy if he has a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he says no, and he tries to close his door. Yeah, I guess we're doing this the hard way. And then they say if I don't get off their property, they'll call the police. But I've heard that one before. So I quickly crucifix karate chop this guy right in the throat and Bible bash this dude's brains in. And the Lord's work has been done. 
I break all the spawners and start to ransack, I mean, keep all this good loot safe in my pockets. I see a block of diamonds. Not bad. And I also see this little pixie's house. Hey, these are all kind of cute. They buzz around your head and they give you these tiny little debuffs, but they seem pretty harmless. But soon I see one of them carrying green tea. That's weird. And this one has diamonds. Wait a minute. My inventory. Those are my diamonds. Every time a pixie bumps into you, they steal something out of your inventory. You guys aren't allowed to steal. Only I get to do that. Of course, one of them stole my arrows, so I can't even shoot them. I need to run after them and slap them with my axe until I find my arrows again. There. That one's got some arrows. I swear. Every time I get something back, I lose two other items. These pixies are more annoying than any pillagers or knights or even the hydra. I spend all day just trying to get all my stuff back. Then, when night comes, I see these ghosts start to spawn. I don't have all my gear, so I don't really want to fight anything right now. Out of the corner of my eye, I see what looks like a house. And I make a break for it. I don't know what's going to be in here, but it can't be any more annoying than those pixies. Oh, it's a villager, so it is more annoying. I rent out a room, run upstairs, and sleep through the night. The next day I see one of the villagers is a farmer, and I get an idea. Maybe this guy can plant me some potatoes. This might be exactly what I've been looking for. But first, I must extinguish these pixies down to their last. There's no deeper meaning here. No path to redemption. I just really, really hate these things, and I want them all dead right now. Day 32, and I wash my hands of the pixie blood, and I take a moment to look out over the inn's view. All jokes aside, the kingdom of Daldar is a beautiful place, and this mod pack has something new and exciting at every turn, and it's pretty fun. I craft up a boat, and then try to persuade the farmer to stop resisting and just get in. The other villagers try to tell me that this is kidnapping and enslavement, but I quickly rebuttal with a, hey, look over there. And with the Battle of Wits won, I head off with my brand new friend. Just in time, too. I think some pillagers just raided that in. So with the biggest not-my-problem energy ever, I run back to my castle. I open the gate and let my farmer come in. I then place the gate back and, yeah, I know this looks like I'm trapping him in here, but this is for his own protection, said every gaslighting person to their victim ever. I do place these iron doors so that I can get in and out quickly. Wait, what? What do you think you're doing? You don't get to sleep in my house. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, we're having some words about this in the morning. The next day, I get my villager working, but he only replants wheat seeds. No potatoes. I consider killing the villager right here, right now, but I don't want to have to clean up the blood and villager goo. Not worth it. However, at the same time, I can't just have him staying in my place all night. Not before marriage. What would grandma say? So I start by digging a mine in the basement of my keep. I also slap an iron door on this so that no mobs can creep up from down here. Then I head down deeper into the mine and I start to get some cobble. Then we get a furnace and we cook it up. I'm gonna need all the cobble for this next project. And what is that next project? Why? We're gonna be making a prison cell. Oh, <coughs> luxury apartments. We're gonna be making luxury apartments for our villagers. And I mean, hey, for all of my adult viewers out there, I know this might be a horribly cramped living space, but I mean, this place would be like $2,000 a month where I live. Honestly, the agent would probably try to tell me it's a luxury apartment. I just made this whole thing hit way too close to home, and now I made myself sad. I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep. But you know what? I'm not a total monster. I'm gonna make sure our farmer has some company. These little pixies come up and run my diamonds. Turns out, you can't have in Daldar. Now, we're gonna go full Google Maps and steal this cartographer. Oh, no. Okay, we got the butcher. Well, I guess we're gonna be doing Uber Eats instead. Man, I'm quick on my feet with these jokes. This next part is my favorite. Everybody hands in the air. Whee! It takes all day, but we finally have our new prisoner. Loyal subject. We have our new loyal subject. Okay, so we're gonna move your bed over here. Oh wait, it, it looks like this guy's headed towards the farmer's house. Wait, hold on. 
Wait, if he's sleeping here, then where is... Oh, no, 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 you don't. No, 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 no. Get out. Bad villager. That's a very bad villager. You're supposed to sleep here in, in this place. Look, it's fine. See? I'll sleep here. Ooh, so cozy, so nice. Gross, 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 gross. <clears throat> okay, yep. Uh, super nice place to sleep. So nice. Oh, those little rooms really do suck. In the morning, before we run out and grab that last villager, I see that the butcher is running towards this door. Hmm. Oh, no. It looks like we have a big hole in the side of our castle. So, just like any time I'm trying to be romantic and fill a hole, I shove a bunch of dirt up there. Ah, yes. The gentleman I. Wait, what are you... Okay there, little buddy. We'll at least have some light while you're doing... Whatever you're doing up there. I set up another little home, but I am going to need some more cobble. So I head down to the mine, and I find some diamond. And I gotta say, it's kind of weird. I have so many diamonds that I almost don't care about getting these. I'm more worried about the stone. Well, the three living areas are done, and the villagers are still going hardcore parkour, and definitely not trying to escape. No, no, that's not what that is. We make our way back to the inn in the woods. The inn in the woods? That sounds... that sounds weird. But we do manage to get our cartographer all the way back home. And while I'm here, I decide to connect my moat to the ocean. So we'll have a quick way to get our boats right up to the gate. We get our map boy across the bridge and, uh, oh dear, it seems that our villagers are trying to take the easy way out and jump off of these vines. Nope, sorry guys, looks like you're gonna live to see tomorrow, whether you want to or not. I spent all that night getting some more beds from the old village, and did I mention we have pandas? Yeah, there's, this room has pandas. Day 39, and we get a little spot set up right here for our seed merchant. The way that he gets to work is that he has to fall out of heaven itself and slam all the way down to earth, but honestly, I've seen worse commutes. I then spend the rest of today setting up the entire left side of the castle wall with little living areas so that we can start to expand our new village inside the safety of the walls. I then pass out some of the carrots because I'm just such a nice king. And now we begin to start to develop the right castle wall with even more living areas. If you're wondering, where do villagers go to the bathroom? Well, obviously, they just shove it all under the beds, like I do in real life. On day 40, I try to pass out some bread, but I guess the villagers are all gluten intolerant, because as soon as I give them some, they ask to see the manager again. I head out today and try to find some more adventure. While I'm out here, I see this giant sea serpent, and I know these are dangerous from watching Forge Labs, but I thought my armor would make this a bit of an easy fight. Whew, I was very wrong. This thing still hits super hard. I try to move to the other island, and it rushes over here, and then I think it beaches itself. In an attempt to save face, he quickly challenges me to a dance battle, and begins to pull the sickest version of the worm that I've ever seen, but, um... Yeah, for real, this is pretty jank. Like, I don't really have any idea what's going on here, but, I mean, he's not hurting me, so... I'll take it. I see the old inn but I move just past it because I want to grab some dark oak. I can't tell if I love dark oak or spruce more, but every time I see dark oak, I make sure to grab the dark oak saplings. We head back home, and every time I see this castle, I'm always so impressed at just how good it looks. I craft up some dark oak doors and set all of them up on the living quarters. But now that they have really luxurious doors, I still want everyone to know that I'm king and I make myself a triple size king bed. I don't want those villagers to think that they're on my level, just because I gave them some fancy doors. Now on day 41, we begin our next big real adventure, and we head across the sea, and I find this custom savanna slash jungle hybrid biome. It has these hostile plants that are definitely not rip-ups of Petey the Piranha plant, and also this tanky moss monster. After fighting this one all afternoon and killing it, I sleep in this cave. Day 42 starts with more hostile plant monsters, and then check out these things. They fly in these packs, and they have some of the craziest attacks I've ever seen. They have this machine gun fire rate of these razor feathers that they shoot at you. Well, I gotta be honest, if I didn't have this diamond shield here, I might be in some trouble. The good news is, 
Once they are done, you can pick up the feathers. And I'm going to try something out. Sure enough, not only can you make arrows out of these feathers, but these feathers have no drop off. So you don't need to aim up above somebody and arch your shots when you're aiming at a distance. I then head over to this weird, creepy looking biome. And as I walk around, I hear this weird droning sound in the background. It's really unsettling and it takes my attention, but it's not like I would ever lower my guard so that I could be surprised by, whoa, a dragon, a living flying dragon. I knew we'd find one. I start to move in and I carefully hide behind this hill and any other cover that I can see. And is that a Cyclops? I think they're fighting each other. <laughs> okay, this 100 day challenge just escalated real quick. Two monsters I've never seen. I have no idea how strong these things are, and they're fighting each other. The dragon manages to take this fight, but then doesn't notice that I'm here. Now, I admit, this is dangerous, and I don't know how strong this thing is, but if he's weakened after that fight, this might be a really good chance to try to get my first dragon kill. He grabs me, but look, he is weak. A few hits with my axe, and we just went from king to Dragon Slayer. Now that was pretty cool. But remember, he was already almost dead, so that doesn't even count as a real dragon fight. It's getting late, so I decide to sleep in the dragon's den tonight. I head out on day 43 to see this massive dragon skeleton, and I notice some emus around. They don't seem to be scared of the dragons at all. Kind of unsettling. I grab up a ton of dragon bones, like I'm the dragonborn himself, and I start to head home with my prize, when I see these tribal people get in my way. It's too late. They notice me, and I have no choice but to defend myself. Oof. I gotta say, though, this is not a good look. I'm beating up on a bunch of indigenous tribespeople on their sacred land, and I feel like a worse monster than Big Oil trying to make its newest pipeline. Oh boy. CNN is gonna have a field day with this one. YouTube is currently canceling my channel as we speak, and you know what? I don't blame him. I keep moving home carefully. I didn't realize just how deep into hostile territory we got. There's another Cyclops on the way home, and I still need to keep an eye out for those crazy birds. Now, in this fight right here, when I first saw this pink tint on my screen, I thought I had ruined my monitor. But it turns out, no, I just ruined my pants. Looks like I'm going to be the next big star on mermaidhub.com. Don't look that up, by the way. I'm sure there's something we both don't want to see. And speaking of something I don't want to see, sorry ladies, I'm in a committed relationship with Jesus. I get home and I load these chests full of trophies that we got from our glorious conquest. Day 44, and I want to get a ton of those Stymphalian arrows. So I craft this up as many as I can, then head back out to farm some more arrows. The shield actually makes this pretty easy. I then decide to keep going and I find this pistol shrimp. And this is a real animal, by the way. This is something you actually should Google. They're pretty cool, but I need to stay focused. I was getting a little bit distracted there, and soon I'm surrounded by these bandits. And even though they're pretty low-level thugs, I get myself super close to another restart. After getting all the way to day 44, I'd be pretty upset if this is how everything ended. And speaking of not wanting to take any extra chances, I see another Hydra, but this time, I'm staying far away. Remember, you need to kill these things with fire, and I just don't have any way of doing that right now. I head back to the spooky forest, and I decide to act like one of those dumb teenagers in every 90s scary movie, and just ignore the super obvious scary things going on and go to sleep in the haunted woods. Then, on day 45, I see this. This lavender forest must be too good to be true. I mean, in a world full of dragons, bandits, and mermaids trying to get my pee pee, I've come across the most beautiful biome I've ever seen in Minecraft. These cherry blossom trees are probably the best part, and they have their own special wood too. I then start to grab up as many of these lavender flowers as I can, and I also try to get some saplings too, because all of this is definitely coming home with me, for sure. But. Unfortunately, I wasn't content with just taking some flowers, and I just had to push on, and I found this. 
It's a woodland mansion, only it's in the savanna jungle, so it's called a jungle mansion. Now, in vanilla Minecraft, a woodland mansion has some pretty good loot. But in this ice and fire mod pack, where there's a ton of amazing structures and god tier level loot, this place is, well, I really hate to say this, but this woodland mansion is a bigger disappointment than me. And that's saying something. In fact, these moss monsters are so tanky that I ran out of arrows fighting them. I even broke all the durability on my paddle axe. And they don't even drop anything when you kill them. Soon, I was just running around with an iron axe. You know sometimes when you're doing something and you're like, oh, well, this is a waste of time. If I could do a redo, I wouldn't even bother. But at the same time, you're already so far in and committed, it's just like, well, I, I want to get the reward. I already spent like two days and all of my weapons and gear trying to get it. Yeah, well, that's this mansion. I managed to get these Totems of the Undying, which in Hardcore seems like it would be the best item you could possibly have. Here's the thing though, the Diamond Shield is so good, and the enemies, they might just kill me in one hit. So if I'm carrying the totem, I mean, what's really the point? I can carry it while I use a bow. Unfortunately, pretty soon, I actually find a better offhand weapon to replace this too. Uh, I'm just a little bit salty about how much time I've wasted in this place. I clear out the rest of this place on day 48, and I don't find much, so I just start to head home. On day 49, I then head back through the lavender forest. And honestly, I should have just filled my inventory here and gone home. This place is so much cooler than a Walmart brand woodland mansion. By the time I get home, I see that an iron golem has spawned, and the villagers are really starting to settle in. I keep looking around, and I start to realize something. This place is the best looking place on the map. I really like what we've got going on here. I actually want to do something that will make this place even better. See, in this mod pack, I can arm my villagers with weapons and make armed guard villagers. They stay up all night, and they really help back up the iron golems. It's a super nice way to keep the village safe. I can give my villagers some of the super overpowered items that I find from the enemies in this world. This longsword, for example. Inside of my keep, I even see this guy. <laughs> now I even have armed guard patrols in my keep watching over their king. Now this, this is what I was talking about when I said we were gonna set out to rebuild society. I also set out all of my lavender around the moat, so that anybody who sees this place will see the royal purple colors, and they'll know this is a king's palace. But I do come up a little bit short for now. Still, that rich purple looks really good. This place keeps getting better. Get it? It it keeps getting better? Because the center, the, the keep in the... Anyway, I head out that night to get more purple trees. But it's getting late, so I decide to sleep really quickly. I'm getting more saplings. I find this group of roaming bandits who try to convince me that pineapple is good on pizza, and for the sake of preserving the human genome, I have to put them down. I then see this group of bandits in green, and they're coming after me because I got a big dump truck of a poop deck that I've been dragging around, but little do they know, if they had just gotten to know me a little bit better, they'd realize I have a big dump truck of a heart, too. Speaking of a dump truck poop deck, I decided to park mine right on this beach at sunset and get some rest. Romantic. I know. Now the next day, I find another Red Hills biome. You guys remember this biome, right? The floating castles here have some of the best loot, and I should be able to get some and bring it back to my villagers if I'm smart. So if it requires me being smart, it probably won't happen. But hey, let's try this first castle here, it's kind of weird. It's like half buried, and it has no mob spawning. But also, it has no weapons. So, just like my last girlfriend, this place just hashtag wasted my time. Now, this place, on the other hand, is going crazy with mobs. I try to go and pet this Ravager, and then I get thrown halfway back to spawn in one shot. This next guy has a crossbow. That kind of sounds like what a hamster sounds like when you launch it out of a potato cannon. A uh, quick disclaimer, no hamsters were hurt in the making of this video. And finally, we take out this last pillager and smash up all the spawners. 
I get all of the spawners broken before I loot the chest so that I make sure I didn't miss one. And the loot is okay. I'm pretty happy. Until I see this. I've looted like four or five of these Red Hill castles, and I've never seen this Wind Wizard guy. Every time he hits me, he gives me a levitation effect, kind of like a mini shulker, but he does it way more rapidly. Like, I can barely figure out what's going on, and I already need to pop a golden apple, because as soon as I land, I take fall damage and he throws me right up again. Now I'm trying to hide underneath the castle itself, so I don't float away, but I still get tossed around. He can tank so much damage, and when I miss the castle, I float up high enough to lose a ton of health. Look, at this point, I've already got the loot, and now it's nighttime. I'm over this. I'm running away, and I'm just going to try to sleep through the night. The next day, I see that these wind wizards are everywhere. I seriously, I've spent days in these biomes, and I've never seen one of these guys. And now they're spawning in like every chunk. Well, so much for emerald armor and overpowered weapons. I'm going to have to pull a Mario here and find my princess in another castle. with all of our loot. I start to hand out all the good loot that I found and beef up the villagers even more. I also put away all of the good armor I found and I should be fully geared here for the rest of the playthrough. Day 56 and I go out to the moat and I start to carve up a little path to start to plant some melons. I also grab some obsidian so I can craft an enchantment library but I, as I'm writing the script I'm thinking about it and I'm pretty sure I never actually used this. The gear and the enchantment books in the world are so much better than any of the enchants that I could get here. But hey, still looks pretty cool. Okay, this is a for real one. For all of the guys who are watching the video right now, tell me in the comments if I'm crazy or not. But do you guys ever aspire to one day have a view when you pee? Like a window over your domain while you drain the main vein? No? Just me? Okay. I then throw out a bunch of carrots before I leave, so when I come back, there will be more soldiers, and then I run out to storm some more castles and grab some more weapons for said soldiers. I head back to the yellow snow castle and, wow, I'm taking a moment here and starting to realize how many pee jokes I'm putting in this video. What does that say about me? Anyway, day 58, 
and we head to this castle out in the ice. I then hit these guys with the most hilarious dad joke, and I tell them it's ice to meet you. They scream, kill the cringe, and they start to rush, but oh, come on, it's funny, you know, because ice to meet... Anyway, after raiding two castles, my inventory is starting to look pretty impressive. I have a ton of diamond gear, and more importantly, I'm getting a lot of longswords for the boys. I'm actually so geared up at this point, I'm getting attacked from the side here, and I didn't even notice it for a while. Seriously, I'm so strong, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't go hunting some dragons. I know I killed that one, but it was already low from the Cyclops. I want to see if I can face one all by myself. I set up a nether portal behind my keep, but when I go in, I can't even find a way to get out of this terrain. I accidentally hit the bedrock roof of the nether, so I just head home. The next day, I head out and I travel for an entire day just to get all the way to the edge of the map where I found that one dragon before. I set up a bed right next to this dragon skeleton, and I know what you're thinking. Is he going to fight the dragon with no audio? Nope. I noticed that the recording was ruined just in time, and now we have sound. And boom, a purple dragon that's on fire? Wait, what's going on here? What? Two dragons? They're fighting each other. Another dragon fight. Only now, it's not going to be one-sided. This is so cool. I've just got to get a little bit closer here. I can see them flying around, but I'm not sure what's really going on here. I still need to approach really slowly. Luckily, there's this little nook here where I can kind of hide away. Bro, look, what is this? I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. The dragon models are better than Mojang's Ender Dragon, and the animations are so clean. Look at this fight. I start to fight the red one. I think the purple dragon might have fallen. It's way down there on the ground, but I can't really think about that right now. I need to make sure that I'm not on fire. I keep using the bucket, and I even have to pop a golden apple right here. Every time I put myself out, he shoots me and lights me on fire again. I'm now running back down the hill, trying not to take fall damage too. I'm pulling back as much as I can. I'm really running back here. I keep firing at her, and even with all of my godly gear, and the eye giving her weakness, and her already fighting that other dragon, this is still a really crazy fight. I'm trying to use objects like trees to slow her down, but it's not working too well. And I'm trying to stay close to the water so that I don't burn up. Okay, I think I might be safe here. Let's check behind. Nope, not safe, not safe. I retreat all the way back into a totally different biome. But finally, she goes down. And I did it. Well, I think I did it. Look, an emu. Oh my god, look. This, oh my, look. This emu is eating the dragon. I knew that these things were the real monsters all along. Now, I know I can kill dragons, but I'm not messing around with these emus. I see this big dome in the distance, and I run over to see what's going on here. Oh, it's a cyclops den. I take a shot at one of them, and he grabs a sheep, and he just throws him down in one bite. Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love me some lamb chops too, but take it easy, my guy. I also see another one in the back here too, and I might be able to grab myself uh, another cyclops eye here. Why is this part of the dome on fire? Why is the hilltop on fire? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think I'm ready for another dragon yet. I don't have any arrows, and I'm not even at full health yet. He starts to stalk me, just like the last one. If I keep running, I, I might be able to escape here. I turn, and he starts to fly up, but it's only so that he can strafe me with a fireball. I need to run in the ocean and try to put this fire out. I turn around again, and he's about to dive down and do another strafe. I'm trying to sail away, but I really just make myself a sitting duck out here. I can't get away fast enough, and I need to jump out of my boat into the water just to save myself. I get back to shore, but he's still chasing me. These dragons just don't give up. But I do. I get back to my boat, and I head home. I'm, I'm so done with this. When I finally get home... I see these castle walls and 
I feel like I can finally breathe again. That was crazy. Then I get inside, and I finally see my beautiful castle again. I realize just how happy I am to have this. I've never missed it so much in my life, and I've never been so close to losing it all, too. And for a minute, I have to admit, I sort of consider, what do I really have to gain by going out and fighting more? I mean, I guess I still want to kill dragons, so they don't kill us, right? Is that what I'm doing? I mean, at the same time, I, I can't rebuild the civilization if I'm dead, right? I see this little guy jumping on my bed. And, okay, I guess you guys can stay in the keep. Why not? I craft up a diamond bow, and I head back into the nether. I want to do a quick test here and see how good my pink scoundrel is, and then I also want to see how good the new diamond bow is. I'm testing them on the exact same mob here in the nether, and I want to see which one's stronger. It turns out it takes half the shots with a diamond bow. Wow. I wish I knew this before I went to go fight the dragons. I carefully and slowly make my way through the nether. Look, I don't care what mod pack I play, I always get super nervous when I play hardcore in the nether. I spend an entire day getting some blaze rods and wither bones and some regular bones from this fortress. Then I head out and seal up the portal behind me so that no villagers will go into the nether. And then, that night, I see this one little guy taking up the whole three wide bed by himself. But I try to be mad, but I mean, this is pretty funny. What's not funny is this dragon bone bow. This should lay waste to any dragons now. Of course, I need some feathers for arrows, so if you guys love chickens, you might want to turn away. And with this new dragon bone bow, I head out and I try to get some revenge on this guy. But if you watched Forge Lab's video, you already know what I did wrong here. The dragon bone bow needs dragon arrows, and I don't have any. Plus, I left my diamond bow at my base, so I have no way of shooting this guy. I'm helpless, but he knows it. I can barely even get out of the water. He's always breathing fire down on me. I need to break into my last golden apple, and I try to get out on the shore and run, but every time I stick my head out of the water, he gets me again. And again, I'm stuck. I'm so desperate, I even need to use one of my notch apples. And soon, I have no option but to dive down deeper into the water and swim away in just any direction I can and try to get away. I try and swim, and I feel like I'm going for miles, but he's always right overhead. Finally, I turn around, and I don't see him above me. I come back to the shore, and... I've spent everything. All of my golden apples, my cyclops eye, even my boat. And I, and I know my boat doesn't seem like, oh, that's so bad, but I'm a captain. Losing your boat? That's a big taboo. I come crawling back home more defeated than I ever have been. I head back to the old village where we started. That's kind of funny, you know. When we first started here, all I thought about was getting into that castle. And then I did it. And then all I thought about was killing other civilizations and hunting dragons for sport. I grab this bell, and I bring it back inside the city walls. I set it up, and that's when it dawns on me. I haven't been rebuilding anything. I've been just as evil and as twisted as the people who came before me, who ruined the civilizations before in the years of apocalypse. I'm just as bad as those who caused nuclear winters and the zombie virus uh, I was supposed to save civilization. Now I'm conquering it. I've been kicking these villagers around and shoving them into little holes in the wall. And I've been a horrible king. I, I'm not a king at all. No. That's going to change today. I'm going to get closer to my people. Okay, buddy. Maybe not that close, but you guys know what I mean. I'm starting over. And it begins with collecting a ton of spruce wood. Then, by the end of the day, I'm grabbing a lot of oak, too. I'm replanting all of these trees outside, because this is going to take a lot of wood. I run out and head back to the lavender forest. This is honestly the last biome that I really felt like I was doing the right thing. I spend a whole day collecting our flowers, and I then finally finish the rim all around the castle. I finish my royal moat for real this time. I've got my whole castle covered with flowers and cherry blossoms. 
all on day 69. A romantic day indeed. And at the end of today, I'm cutting down the trees because I want to get more saplings. I want the whole castle wall to be overgrown with cherry blossoms. This is not a place of war anymore. This is a home for our new world, and it should look like it. Now, before we move on to the next phase, we need to clear out a little space in front of our castle. That means we need to dig out all the hills and fill in all the swamps. Now that all the land is set flat, we can get back to our basics. And yes, for the first time ever, I've spent diamonds on a hoe. I'm really that much of a baller today. And you know what I get as a reward? Well, apparently, the ground is only one block deep. And then I hit this huge ravine and fall all the way to the bottom. Luckily, I have Feather Falling 4 on my boots and armor that can protect me from two creeper explosions. All I wanted to do was farm, and now I'm down here fighting for my life, and isn't that right, Randy the Roach? Well, I guess it's true. You should never waste diamonds on a hoe, boys. I do manage to get back to the surface, and I keep working on the new farms. Day 73, and we are getting all the details worked out. I outline the farms with jungle plank frames, and set some torches up on posts surrounding each plot. Then, I start by planting our Pam's Harvest Craft crops, and then our carrots. By day 74, I have everything set. There's carrots over here, then mix crops uh, over here. We have our wheat in the back, and then here's where I put my potatoes. If I had any! Then, I keep expanding the trees on top of the walls, and walking up here looks pretty perfect. I keep on working all the way through to day 75, too. I want to make sure that there are as many trees up here as possible. Also, I do get spruce wood every time I cut some trees down. And I'm going to need a lot of that, too. I also add some of these special trees on the very tops of each tower. And speaking of spruce, we take another day to start farming a ton of it. I find a suitable area on the side of our farms, and I start to set up the framework. And by that night, I have a good idea of what I want to do. Now, I don't want to go too overboard with this build. I'm going to try to use just spruce wood and see if I can make this work. I don't really have too much oak yet, and I need a lot of it for the future builds. But by using all the different types of spruce blocks in this build, it's not looking too bad. And now I'm starting to get the roof set up too. By day 78, I think I've got the outside pretty much done. The inside just needs some support beams and some fences in the right spots. But I think we're good enough to start moving in the clocks. Yes, come to me, my pretties. If I saw this many chickens coming at me in real life, I'd be so scared. Like, worse than if I saw a skinwalker. Okay, now that they're all in, I will just throw up some of the... Oh, no, 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 dude, don't even joke about this. Oh my, what if? Whew. And of course, in my panic, after seeing that creeper, instead of placing a torch, I mess up this beam. Oh, great. So now I... Wait. Wait. Oh, yes, it happened. I finally started to treat my villagers right, and the Minecraft gods reward me with the greatest prize there is. That's right. We've got a potato. Now, I'm going to lead all the piggies in and... This is, wow, there are too many pigs and they are not all gonna fit. There's a part of me that really wants to start making some bacon here, but now that I've got my potato, I'm too happy to hurt any of these little guys. Now looking at this barn full of pigs and chickies in the light, makes me kind of proud. And now that the animals have all been moved in, we can clear this old fence and start to work on the real build. It's a good thing that I planted all those oak trees. It's almost like I know what I'm doing here. Because this next project has so many oak logs, it's kind of ridiculous. We have about half the framework set out by day 80. And then that night, we're starting to work on the second floor. Now, it's taking a long time for two main reasons. Number one is because I needed to farm all of the oak trees and replant everything since we're technically in a swamp and I don't have any natural oak forest to go and destroy. Also, that would make Mr. Beast cry, and 
We can't have that. And two is I keep looking back at the original key to make sure I'm making a fairly close copy. Now, I, I know I could just make my own design, but there's actually a very important reason why I'm trying to make an exact copy of my own keep. And not just throwing up some little cottages for my villagers. It's because I don't want to have some royal palace on a hilltop and lord over my villagers. I see now that I... Oh, ooh, this creeper. No, 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 no. I hate creepers the most. Even worse than dragons now. Too close. I wasn't scared there, by the way. I was all faking that for the video. <clears throat> totally. Now, what was I monologuing about? Oh, right. An extra copy. Just like this. Really. Really now? <sighs> I'm gonna go take my anger out on the spruce tree. Like I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, the villagers and I are rebuilding civilization together. I'm putting extra care into this build, making sure that every detail is as solid as my own home. Sadly, I didn't get the roof finished before the rain started, but I did manage to get it done on the next day. For now, I'm adding these window shutters. And I spend almost all of day 84 getting enough spruce to get the roofs looking perfect. And now we can do an official house tour from the attic to the spacious second floor where the bedrooms are, and now down to the first floor. And of course, the outside, which I must say, this one almost looks better than mine. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. But we aren't done. Not even close. Since we have an even better farm already set up outside the walls, it's time to remove all these crops. Then, we get started on the next house right away. And luckily, it only takes me about one day to get all the framework set. I'm going a lot faster since I pretty much know what I'm doing this time. Our civilization has truly, truly grown. All these villagers are clearly very excited about our new homes. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't actually speak, huh? The floors are going in now, and it's just in time. We only have about 10 days left. But like I said, we're going much faster with the second house, and I'm pretty sure I know where everything needs to go. I only head back to the old house to check it out every once in a while. Day 90, and we start to set up the beds back at the first house that I made. And I want to have a lot of villagers. I mean, the more the better. But I, at the same time, I also don't want to just cram every single inch with beds. Sure, we're medieval, but we aren't barbaric. Day 91, and I know I can make some serious shortcuts if I just put less oak logs in this house, but I don't even entertain that thought. Making every part of each house top-notch will be worth it at the very end. And the houses are all pretty cramped and really close together in the corners, but I actually really like that. It gives this whole place a very dense medieval town look, and it fits perfectly for me. By day 92, I'm already working on the roof of the second house. Something that took almost 10 days should be done in about four, now that I'm a lot better at this build. I rarely make any mistakes. Okay, I spoke too soon. This window here is all wrong. By that night, I'm already starting to get all the glass in place. By day 93, the last pieces of the roof are done. And in fact, the biggest parts of our medieval castle are done too. I'm setting up some of the torches to keep mobs away. Even up here, this whole thing looks great. And down on the ground level, this whole place looks so cool. I feel like I've really outdone myself on this one. I know that most of this castle was already built, but I've come in and I've added onto it in a perfect way. You can barely tell where the add-ons begin and the pre-builds end. Now, for our Emerald Merchant, we couldn't have done all of this without him. Her. Um, it? Either way, this is going to be a proper market stall worthy of them. By day 95, we get the stone base set up, and now, I gotta say, this looks pretty nice too. Not too over the top. Humble, but it's a proper place to work. Just like the entire town. I decide to throw down a tree in the se Okay, not literally throw down, Captain. I plant a tree in the center of our town square, 
And now, I'm going to make some of the living areas in each home their own separate rooms. Now, there are going to be some roommates here, sure, but that's only so nobody gets lonely. And of course, I could just throw beds down and call it a day. But that's not what Minecraft is all about. Details and care. I try to put as much detail and as much care into my builds when they mean something to me. And if you're watching this, you know this. Because when I make my YouTube videos, I try and put as much detail and care into those as well. Yes, they might be a little bit longer than most 100 day challenges, and they definitely take a long time to get out. But no matter how long they are, or if they come out only once a month, you all always come in and watch them all the way through. The views and the watch time is, it's frankly too much. I can't begin to explain how much love I feel making these videos and this community. Sure, running around trying to kill the biggest monster and having the craziest mods are uh, fun. Don't get me wrong. But I know that there are a lot of people out there who watch Minecraft videos just to see what fun and creative builds can be made with just a little bit extra detail and care. I couldn't slay every monster I came across, and I didn't conquer all of Daldar. Maybe I'm not your real king, but if you give me a chance to be your captain, I promise I won't lead you wrong. Well, what do you guys think? Take a look at what we've managed to get done in 100 days. Let me know in the comments if you like our little medieval civilization and what you guys think I could do better. Okay, I only have two days left. Today I'm going to mass produce some diamond crossbows with all the loot we've managed to get throughout the playthrough. I'm going to arm the villagers with our very best. Now I know that the villagers aren't the best fighters, and maybe we could use these diamonds for something better, but it's not about me now. I want to give the villagers diamonds so that they're protected, so that they can protect the town. I try to make sure as many of the villagers are as safe as possible. Day 100 is coming, and I don't know what's coming as its finale. But I do know that this town, this whole playthrough, it's been exactly what I want. And now, after making this place look proper, I decide today is the day I'm gonna make that shepherd's pie. I head out to grab some potatoes and there, right there, just past the barn, it's a white dragon, an ice dragon. It looks like it might be stuck on that hillside. I don't wanna lure it into my town, but I also don't want to get too close to it. Well, I mean, we are in a medieval castle. Might as well use the towers to our advantage. Well, he isn't stuck now. He runs right into the barn, and I think I can hear what sounds like breaking glass. And I'm sure he's eating the chickens. I'm taking some shots, and most of them are hitting. But this crossbow uses diamond bolts, so I don't want to miss a single shot and waste any of them. I come out front and try to confront him but wait, yeah, we did it. It may have cost us our barn and our chickens, but we've slain the dragon and we've saved the town. All in a day's work. Well, I guess all in a 100 days work. Kind of easy to be honest. I mean, I would have thought the 100th day would have been a little bit more than an ice baby. There, I knew it. That ice dragon was just a distraction to draw me out of the castle, so that the real dragon could sneak in. This one is a fire dragon, and it could set all of the housing on fire if we're not careful. I can see that the iron golems and the villagers are already trying to fight back. Hopefully, she's already low, like the last few ones we've killed. But I can also see that a lot of villagers have been killed, and the houses are on fire. I'm low, so I'm going to hold back for a second and heal but I can hear the villagers dying. And I know I can't wait here for too long. I come around to see a ton of fire, but I can't see the dragon. But soon, right there, she's perched up on the alleyway, just out of reach of the golems, but not out of reach of my crossbow. And it only takes a few more hits, and I did it. No, 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 we did it. And we're only just beginning to rebuild our civilization. Now we're getting ready to move into the industrial era and rebuild our society as the world is at war. But if we do it together, 
I'm sure nothing can stop us. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's dinner time. 